against what many understood to be part of the long legacy of pain, suffering, castration, demoralization, the symbol that that that, that uh, statue represented. But if I would take you back even 50 years ago, when Amari is to tell her over in St. Petersburg, tore down a racist mural that was hanging in the city hall and did two and a half years in prison for taking down that mural that depicted black people looking like apes while white people vacation on the beach. So we have this ongoing continual pattern and legacy that it takes people and groups to have the courage to stand up. So now that we've had that victory, I'm hoping that we have a continuation of victory. And one of the primary pieces of work that is on the forefront now that is being led by this coalition called uh, Florida Right Restoration Coalition that is being led by uh, Desmond Mead, uh and others is to restore voting rights for all people. See, we can't talk about America being the greatest democracy and some states penalizing people for a lifetime, depending on what political uh, party is in leadership that makes a decision if you should have your rights restored. We don't go on the phrase of if you paid your debt to society, you have no future dealings with the court, probation, everything is done then why is democracy being denied to you? So a big campaign um, is being put forth uh, that will uh, allow everyday citizens to sign a constitutional amendment petition. This is just a petition to say that you want it on the ballot for 2018. And it's going to get kicked off statewide on August the 5th. And I'm hoping that uh, people, uh, you know, examine their heart, their mind, to say what part of history, what side of history they want to be on in terms of moving this state forward. Is it going to be caught up in the last vestige of hate, or will it bring everybody into a fair democracy? And so that is, again, the Florida Right Restoration Coalition. You can go online and pull the petition down. But it's going to be hundreds of people on the ground from faith-based organizations to labor uh, unions and nonpartisan. But it is just simply the right thing to do. So, again, brothers, thank you so very much. All power to the people. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. Right. thank, right. thank you, Connie. Uh, uh, from day one, anybody that knows Connie Bird knows she is a fighter for the people, for the community. And uh, whenever whenever I can get out there with her, I'm out there. And she know we have similar issues and, and, and the people within this community, the issues that she battle are more often than not community-wide issues. So, so you can always make a difference by being involved and, and, and that's part of the Get Off the Couch campaign too. Because a lot of people talk about it but that's so to get off the couch and go make stuff happen. So, so again, thank you, Connie. So much Democrat, Republican, mm -hmm. as it is folks with money and folks without money. And part of the process is, and if you look at the 13th Amendment, which is what they're talking about, if you're incarcerated, if you, if you are found guilty of a crime in the system, you become a slave. It is clearly written that that's the only legal slavery in the United States of America. So that's why we got prisons and prisons and prisons full of black males literally warehoused in prisons. And privatizing has become and, their, and, their and, new and, focus to continue that, that enrichment and, off our high. And Republicans have helped with that. You know, Definitely. With, uh, with, uh, with uh, our, our, our present uh, governor uh, uh, moving forward the uh, uh, privatization of prisons. Yeah, yeah. Hey, but that's about money. Uh, See, yeah, 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 sure. Which was the whole issue of the Confederate so slavery. slavery was about money. It was about money. money, yes. Yeah, okay. Well, right. that's, we, we can agree on that. Yeah, we just uh, yesterday was reading that uh, 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 Jeff Sessions uh, approved uh, the confiscation of property 
of people, uh, not even uh, people that were uh, or that are being uh, declared guilty, but uh, just on accusations. But Attorney General Jeff Sessions sees those as exceptions to the rule. He says most of the time forfeiture is a crucial weapon against crime. It weakens the criminal organizations when you take their money. And it strengthens our law enforcement when we can share it together and use it to further our effort against crime. Sessions is bringing back something called federal adoption. Basically, that's what they call it when local cops seize an asset but then hand it over to the feds. It's forfeited under federal rules, and a portion is then shared back with the local police. This matters because it gives local police a possible end run around their state's forfeiture rules, and some of those states have been getting more restrictively. The civil forfeiture, by definition, involves taking property from people who've never been convicted of anything. Still, while some state legislators are now coming around to share this point of view, most police chiefs still insist they need civil asset forfeiture which often provides them with crucial extra funding. Ron Brooks of the National Narcotics Association's coalition was one of several law enforcement representatives who lined up at the Justice Department today to thank Attorney General Sessions, and then he added this. And I want to thank you on behalf of our members for restoring support to law enforcement. For eight years, uh, we felt that we didn't have the support of this department, and, and we finally feel that we do. Brooks wasn't the only one to say something like this. Many American law enforcement officers see this policy change as yet another sign that President Trump is on their side. Well, just right. the accusations, they can, they can actually uh, uh, take your property away. Isn't that the reason why he, the, the, the law was, went out of favor in the first place? Is because that it was, it was too unfair and it really wasn't solving the problem. And it was enriching governments and it was, it was, it was uh, rife for corruption. And corruption is already endemic in this society. So that's what, that was one of the problems with those who voted uh, against this administration was that it was on the roll backwards in a lot of ways. And Jeff Sessions it seems to be crystallizing that um, at this juncture. All right, we got another caller. Wade. Wade out of Clearwater is calling us. Good afternoon, Wade. Welcome to hey. Sunday okay. Forum. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, I was at the show every Sunday. And one of the things that I think that we are missing as a people, especially black people here in this country, is the fact that religiously we have been blind to about what needs to happen on Sunday morning, especially with the Protestant persuasion. There are too many different ideologies floating around that came from Europe, not God, not Jesus. If you examine what I'm saying, we have been tricked to not try to do anything while we're alive on this planet because we're going to hit our rewards when we go to heaven. And you have to realize also that Jesus Christ himself was murdered on the cross. And what do we do now? We symbolize somebody that died on the cross because the message was given to us by anglo saxon to express our faith in God uh, in a certain way. Jesus himself did not go to church every Sunday, specifically Protestant churches, Baptist, Methodist, Catholic, and all the rest, to do what we do on Sunday. He gave us life so we would have it more abundantly to love the Lord himself and love your fellow man like you love yourself is not happening in the black community especially. Thank you. Yeah, that's pretty deep. Thank you, Wade. Uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and throw my two cents in. <laughs> but being the, the grandson of a Baptist preacher, part of my upbringing was that the temple was not the church. The temple is your body, and that in the Bible it tells you how to take care of God's temple, which is your Bible, which is your body. So, so it is not that edifice that you go to every Sunday and you pray and worship to to images 
of of of, a, of a Jesus Christ that you may believe or not believe in, because all the time I went to the church, I know in the Bible it says that his you know his his hair was like wool and his skin was copper, and I've never seen that image in any of the black churches that I went to. So again, you know, I'm just gonna throw it out there that that there's a lot of religions, and 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 the Bible do speak of uh, of the edifices being Babylon the Great. So the Babylon the Great. Uh, he said there'd be a lot of false prophets and a lot of false churches. So again, that's that's come true. It's up to you to pick and choose and and and, and try to do the best you can and picking a way to to follow the word. But but uh, every church that's on every corner. Matter of fact, there's a couple corners in St. Pete. Uh, that, that I used to work over there. It was a tr it's four corners and it was five churches. So again, you know, all of them can't be doing the right thing, and all of them are definitely not doing the same thing. Yeah, and I think that I think the caller was getting at a deeper point. I think he was talking about also just the psychological effects of the whole narrative, and you know, to have the picture of white Jesus in every church, and I mean just about every church. Yeah. I've seen very few yeah. pictures, and even though even though just putting the black Jesus up there doesn't solve any problems, no, no. but it, you know, it says if the Son of God is white, and yet we're and this is during slavery. You call him the master. <laughs> you know, that's the del deleterious effect on the psychology, on the of psychology, and, and that's deep. And especially if people are so afraid of questioning uh, the church. So, you know, I think that he was getting at a deeper point there, and there's so much more we can say about the impact of religion in terms of our psychological impact. Well, who, who printed all the books? Who 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 gave us the scriptures and all that kind of stuff? So so again, we gotta take into consideration is not only did they do this in America. I've been to South America where I'm just I'm just telling you the truth. They built Catholic churches on the the burial grounds and the holy the holy the holy ground of all the natives and, and the different uh, sects of people in South America. The Catholic Church. I mean, the, the most religious institution in the world. Can, you know, for many, you know, they made sure that you understood that their God was the greatest God they were, and they put his church on top of, of theirs. So, so so, it's always this dominant thing that's going on in society, and, and it's part of it. we got to deal with it. Yeah, deal with it, definitely. 813-239-9663. Got a lot of callers on there. I don't know <laughs> what prompted that. But... And, we, and we didn't even talk about OJ yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, to a certain generation, it doesn't even matter anymore. Uh, the symbol is not OJ, it's Trayvon. Go ahead, Denzel out of Orlando. Welcome to Sunday Forum. Hey, thank you, man. Um, well, I got that comment on two things. The first one would be uh, uh, the 13th Amendment that y'all was mentioning. Yes. And if anybody ever been to prison, I'd have been in prison before. And in prison, one of the most blatant realities of this enslavement that's still going on is, you know, they count about five times a day, but one of them is called it Master Roster Count. It is Master Roster Count. Among all the different other times of enslavement that you see going on in here, and the same psychological impact that it had on our people back then, it has the same psychological impact now. And maybe that's to explain why the recidivism rate is so high, you know, when brothers get out of prison because of this psychological impact that's been taking place during that time here. The second thing is, I don't, uh, you know, I'm not considered a religious dude, but I do follow the Bible. And in there, as y'all were saying, it only gives descriptions of a, a dark people. And I truly believe that we, the so called, and all the people, the sinners of that book, well, with that being the case, that book tells us that we are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Therefore, in reference to this monument, I, I think I heard a call of only God say that on. Um, it's a painful reminder, and we don't want to be reminded of, well, for the lack of knowledge, I'll be destroyed. Not, not just only that, it's verses where they say, remember, remember your affliction. Remember what we've been through. Because they don't generate, they don't need to be fooled by this. And women wink by this government and by these people who really don't love them. They need to remember. They need to know what they think, what we're going through at this time, what they've been through. And they want to know how body or came or look back. And see, I don't want to be there anymore. If, if, you, woke, if, you, if you had shackles on your arms or shackles on your legs, 
and and for 20 years and when they took the shackles off those scars are still there uh, uh you you don't need the scars to remind you but they are still there and, and, and what they meant so so the confederacy was a culture uh of of, of good and bad and, and for and for white folks you know they only want to see the good and, and the enrichment part of it. They, 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 they from time to time forget the other side of it and, and, and they don't even, they can't even put themselves in the place of those folks who was in those fields and, and in those farmhouses and in those ditches and, and all those other places. So I'm just saying, I really don't need a monument to tell me that my people was abused for 400 years. That's just me. I agree with you. And, and, and we, have, we have someone who's coming up who, who has a, uh, Mark has a, uh, a little bit of a, a problem with the, uh, with the uh, tone, with the angle. Uh, at, uh, he's, uh, he'll be coming up in a few minutes. Okay, but, and it sounds like Denzel, you're saying that if this is still uh, a, a problem society, you, it's still basically enslaving people through the prison, price, through the prison industrial complex, that oh. the flag should fly. Not, not necessarily at the flash to fight because we don't want to be so stuck on what they got physically out there. You know, when their minds will never be correct, no matter what they have physically standing up. They can replace that for the black man standing in every state. And that they won't change their minds their towards them. And you're right, we don't need that monument to remind us of our pain. Or that some type of our future, like uh, school books. You know, we don't want to um, eliminate the remembrance of it. I thought I heard someone uh, noting on that, that we shouldn't even remember, we don't want to be reminded of this. But it's something that we would always need to keep in mind. That's, yeah. that's what I was if you saying. don't remember your history, you're doing the repeating, right? Yes, sir. Exactly, exactly. And, I know y'all and this is the reality that we live in. If you're a block away, if you're a half a block away, what are you then? Because that's how you judge. You know, you got a lot of good white folks and a lot of good black folks. But, but if you're in Mississippi, and you're half a block away. If you're white, you're white. You're black, you're black. And if, and if they have a hard time uh, trying to figure it out, you're going to be black. That's just the world we live in. Calling from the West Coast, Cali. Oh, hi. Thanks for taking my call. Um, to, to me, a big issue um, with Christianity and the churches and in relation to our country right now is basically f- f- flunking the militarism test. Basically, any church that considers itself to, to be Christian that doesn't make opposing militarism and the mass murder that's constantly being done by the U.S. to other countries, that has to be a prime factor, or I don't even see that, uh, that church as Christian. Um, a main f- focus should be walking with the Prince of Peace, and the reality is our executive branch are full of mass murderers. Trump, Obama, both totally guilty of mass murder, just as much as Ted Bundy or the son of Sam. And the fact is, we need to start calling out this criminality, these illegal wars, and the murder that's constantly happening, and also murder of darker-skinned peoples. These bombs are never falling on Europe. They're always falling on darker-skinned people, destroying nations in Africa and the Middle East. The fact is, this is happening daily. Thousands upon thousands of civilians have been killed and killed every day. During the Trump administration, no less than 12 civilians have been killed every single day. And and the silence from these supposedly Christian churches is deafening. Good point, Mark. Matthew, I I, uh, I wanted to say that uh, very fittingly, uh, you're talking about uh, international issues. And uh, very fittingly, uh, uh, Venezuela comes to mind. Uh, the Catholic Church yep. has been silent, totally silent at the burning of people. They're actually burning people alive. And most of the images that I have seen are darkish skinned people being burned alive. And nothing is being said. The whole opposition, Venezuelan opposition, from top to bottom, quiet, totally quiet. Not a word, not a sound coming from any one of the leadership denouncing uh, uh, condemning uh, this this uh, this sort of uh, uh, you know atrocities in in uh, yeah traditionally the churches hadn't spoke up a bunch about much of anything uh, anything that didn't right. involve the priests raping little boys and, and 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 having wives and all this kind of other stuff but I just mean as a church as an institution it has not spoken out about 
men and atrocities all over the world. So again, uh, I'm just saying, and and they're not doing a good job leading people back to God either. So right, the church has always been for the ruling, the yeah. ruling class. Right, that's I mean, who runs so, it. Yeah. That's who funds it. <laughs> exactly. So what do you want to say? How does that fit, how, how does that fit in with Jesus' teaching then about it you know, violence and uh, it's propaganda? Know, how, how, how does that fit in with Martin Luther King, who very much politicized the church and then eventually was uh, assassinated largely for opposing the Vietnam War. He right. made it that point so long ago that the U.S. is the main purveyor of violence in the world today, but the silence from, from the liberals and the African-American community during Obama's crimes was friggin' deafening, man. To me, it was totally gross. And it was a grotesque d d display. Yes, Trump is killing more. Trump is, of course, worse than Obama. But the fact is, they were the similar crimes. Ted Bundy, everybody, son of Sam. Let's not abstract these murders like it's just somebody, like it's just happening to somebody else. No way. It's that the fact is, Obama and Trump, they drop bombs on families. They're destroyers of families. They're destroyers of human life. They only deserve to be in jail. They only deserve to be in jail after a proper trial. How come the, the churches aren't strongly, stridently calling for that? I follow Martin Luther King. I don't follow a lot of this other hocus pocus that's going on. And I'm not talking about your show. It's not hocus pocus at all. But I mean, a lot of these false Christians that are like for militarism and then they want to pretend that they're a Christian, we just need to go back to the Riverside speech of Martin Luther King, get radical again, grow some webos, and just, you know, it, uh, oppose what is completely morally wrong and that we are responsible as a country. It's a disgrace that yeah. people are being murdered today. Bombs are being dropped while this show is going on. Innocent people in other countries, bombs aren't falling on our heads. You know, the last time I checked, Afghanistan, Syria, and Iraq are not bombing anywhere in the U.S., nor have they ever invaded this country. So it's just, you know, we're in a, a rogue oppression nation. Right. But when it comes to war, presidents are just figureheads. They're just figureheads. They're working in the interest of capital. So you can't just stop at Trump or Obama on that. You have to go to every president ever existed in this country. David Carter dropped some bombs. So give me a break. It's been endemic to this society. And Eddie, one last thing. Can't we? Yeah, it's capital. You do it for capital. Well, why else do it? Right. So, Eddie, in yes. 1957, yes, something happened. Televangelists, white churches turned to televangelism to get their message out. Right. And it's been powerful. Billy Graham became the the pastor of the rulers, the ruling class and got rich because televangelism was the new church and the same year the germans were reorganized their church and that was the same year the sclc the southern christian leadership conference was founded that's right by martin luther king so ever since then we have had the rule of the church i, I remember as a child uh there being prayer towers and and reverend ike said hell is the first of the month and you're three months behind, and you don't know where the rent's coming from. Now, I heard Reverend Ike say that on the radio back in the day. So, <laughs> so Reverend Ike was one that said, don't wait till you die to get your, to get your <laughs> blessing. Sorry, go, yeah. go, go, go get them while you're here, while you can enjoy them. So, right. so you got heaven on earth, you got hell on earth. Now, that's one thing I did remember <laughs> about the old gospel and those folks who used to run our community, because every community had a pastor or two that, that were the leaders that the community looked to to make stuff happen. So again, right. you know, we, we still got some of that and, and what happened to bring it all back around to a complete circle, the fact that some of them showed up at the county commissioner meeting uh, to make this, this great victory for the community, a community wide victory. So so thanks thanks those pastors who showed up and the ones who will show up the next time because they see that's how it works.